feeling the burn? More like feeling the germ. One time I found snot on a piece of equipment. The grossest thing I've seen involved a shower. We're testing what you're touching at the gym. Time bounce time. Counting down the surfaces with the most germs. The pink color is bacteria. The level of contamination was a lot higher than I expected it to be. And after your workout, do you really need those pricey protein powders? The obsession with immediate post-exercise consumption is probably overdone. It's time to kill the buzz. OK, let's get swabbing. We're getting down and dirty at some of your favorite gyms. Swabbing services to see what you're really touching when you're working out. Shaving color. Dumbbell stem. Hitting up three popular chains. Visiting nine locations in all. Professor Swap. Taking over 50 samples of surfaces you touch when you sweat. Okay, what's next, Max? Perfect. Okay, lots of ellipticals over here. And counting down five pieces of equipment to find out which is weighted down. Oh, God, that's heavy. With the highest count of bacteria. All right, what's next? We're checking to see if gyms are doing enough to keep equipment clean and if they're giving us everything we need to do our part. We're packing up our samples and sending them off to the lab. Meantime, we're visiting athletes who are pretty familiar with gyms. I'm in the gym maybe nine hours a day. Talk to me about the equipment that you use. I am actually a trainer. Oh. Uh, so I touch everything. I love the leg press. OK. That's my favorite. And they have some horror stories. One time I found snot on a piece of equipment. Snot? Yeah. People throw up in the gym because you're doing too heavy of a lift. When it comes to ick, can it make you sick? No one knows more than microbiologist and self-described germ guy Jason Tetro. Why does it matter if the gym equipment that we're using is clean? Our own microbes are absolutely fine. But the minute that we start touching other people's microbes, especially if they're pathogenic, it can lead to infection. So there are a couple of things that we need to be concerned about. The first are any kind of skin bacteria that cause infection. Staphylococcus aureus is the big one, but there are others such as yeasts and possibly molds as well. And what is it about the nature of working out and touching and using equipment that makes having clean equipment even more important? The big problem is the sweat. It makes it really easy for you to be able to deposit something onto a surface, but also pick it up. What will we find on our swabs? Our results are in. Coming in at number five for the germiest piece of equipment, the elliptical. The least germs was the elliptical. <gasps> you like drip all over it. You start going, your nose starts running. Really? Whoa. When you think about it, there's not a lot of contact going on. The surface is really easy for you to get that cloth on there, and you're going to put on some really good pressure in order to clean it. That brings us to number four on our list, the dumbbell. It actually is a matter of logistics. A dumbbell has a restricted space because, of, essentially, of the weights. OK. And it's really difficult to get enough pressure in there with the wipe to actually clean it down. But do these fitness fanatics know how to clean properly? We're putting them to the test. We want to see how you guys clean your stuff. Right, here go. So here you go. We Absolutely. have some wipes. We load up these dumbbells with Glow Germ, a spray that mimics microbes and glows under a black light. It's going to show yes. us the spots that you missed. So how did they do? Gross. It feels like even if you try to do a good job, yeah, you literally like, have to like get like a brush in there. A little bit of a miss there. You got to really get in those crevices, yeah. but that's hard to do. Right? Especially with the texture itself, it's it's made in a way for hand grip, but that leaves a lot of the hand behind. They've got like so many of these itty bitty little grooves. Well, even if you use the spray onto the wipe itself, it's not going to get into those okay. grooves. 
Jason says the best way to get it clean, spray the dumbbell directly and let it soak. But you won't be totally in the clear. But look, you just can't totally clean it. It's no. so hard. It, it really is very, very difficult. And that's one of the reasons why you're always going to be finding some kind of microbial concentration there. Hmm. What you want to do is you use the disinfectant to be right. able to minimize it. Counting down to number three on our list of germiest equipment, the barbell. On one barbell we swabbed, we found high levels of yeast. We know that yeast can be a part of a human microbiome. Mm -hmm. We also know that yeast can cause infections. Mm -hmm. Those who are depositing that either don't realize that the yeast is part of their microbiome or they're not doing a very good job of cleaning their hands after taking care of an infection. Okay. I try to give this bar a good scrub, but I'm no match for those microbes. So all you've really done is spread it. Jason shows us the best way to really get that bar clean. What you want to do is you want to try and get a really good soaking onto the surface itself. Oh, so you're not rubbing, you're dabbing. What you're trying to do is you're trying to take whatever has come off onto the surface itself. Next up, number two on our list, the yoga ball. Not to toot my own horn, I'm like very <laughs> clean about gym equipment. Okay. Because I don't want anyone else to judge me for but being dirty. I'm so scared. I'm going to be honest. Still not good enough. Okay. <gasps> Ew. Oh my god. And I took like the thing and I was like really, I tried scrubbing so that it would like pick stuff up. Right? Yeah, that makes me not want to touch gym equipment, honestly. If these athletes are still finding germs after a good scrub, what gives? Jason says the germs we're finding could be because the gym's cleaning supplies aren't being used properly. Every single disinfectant has a contact time that is required, and it's usually 15 to 30 seconds at minimum. At all the gyms we go to, there are lots of signs reminding us to wipe, but there are no clear instructions on how long to let cleaning products sit. You really need to give it that time in order to kill the level of microbes that we found there. In the private gym we're filming in, we take a closer look at the instructions on the disinfectant. Allow product to penetrate and remain wet for 10 minutes. I don't have 10 minutes in between a workout. Nobody I... has 10 minutes. Wow. And that's the big problem when it comes to gyms. Now it's time to reveal the germiest piece of equipment we found. The mat. The mat? You're going to spray and you're going to do a quick wipe and away you go. That's exactly what I do. That's exactly what most people do. What's it like trying to clean that? It looks worse. Spots all over. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, there's one for us. Look at that. I did more than normal. Usually it's like one, two, and you're all right, you throw it away, you're done. Looks clean. Oh, oh. So. Just a couple minutes. A little bit over there. Little, oh, little spot there. The, the mat. mat. The sponge of the gym. It catches all your sweat coming off, catches any dead skin coming Probably off. Drool a little bit on it. On the mats we swab, we find more Staphylococcus than on any other piece of equipment. It can be a harmless bacteria found on many people's skin, but certain types can cause infections in others. Is something like staff really a concern for someone who is otherwise a healthy individual? There has to be some weakening of the immune system that can lead to infection. So if you're going and you happen to have a cut, then there's a likelihood it could get into your skin. We always recommend that if you're gonna work out, anytime uh, you have a cut or a wound, you cover that up with a bandage. So how can you make sure your mat is clean? Check out Jason's technique. So what we're doing at this point is we're going to try and maximize the amount of liquid that we're putting on here. OK, that's a lot of spray. And I would just leave it like that for particular contact time. And then when I'm done, then you come in and you essentially want to try and get as much into the paper towel oh. as possible. Now that we know the germiest equipment at the gym, it's time to hit the showers. 
No gym users around when we take out our cameras, but we did find lots of microbes lurking. They were by far the germiest. Don't I'm not that. surprised. No surprise. Yeast, mold, the, bacteria. The grossest thing I've seen involved a shower. It also involved a bloody menstrual product oh. on the shower floor. Oh, OK, yeah. That was my turn off from public yeah. showers. OK, fair, fair. I don't shower at the gym. I'm going home. Do you shower at the gym? I have. I'm scared. While our germiest piece of equipment, the mat, had a lot of bacteria, the shower had over four times that, including high levels of yeast, mold, and staphylococcus. How can a shower be dirty? We're literally running hot water and soap through a shower all the time. First off, you need 70 degrees Celsius water in order to kill microbes. Okay. No one's ever going to be in a 70 degree shower. And it's warm. Okay. And so that allows the microbes to grow. That's where viruses can hide. That's mm. where fungi can hide. So warts and athlete's foot. And then you take your bare foot, you step on it, and now all of a sudden you have an exposure. We share our findings with the Fitness Industry Council of Canada. They say our results are anomalies rather than a reflection of the industry at large. As for the gym chains we tested, they all say they're committed to providing a clean and safe environment for their employees and customers. Anytime tells us bacteria is ubiquitous in the environment and can never be completely eliminated. Planet Fitness says they encourage members to wipe down equipment before and after each use. And Good Life adds they've shared our findings with their own cleaning experts and are always looking for improvements. In the meantime, if you want to help protect yourself in the shower, experts say flip-flops are the way to go. Next time, if you do need to shower, <laughs> Thank you. we got these for you. It's one step in the right direction. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not touching the gross floors. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You're welcome. Thank you very okay. much. Avoid the germs.